radar. So yeah, the Spencer Sanders thing. I mean, that's just that's just the one of the worst decisions that's been made on a guy's uh, when it comes to a guy's eligibility and his landing spot that we've maybe ever seen. I mean, yeah. honestly, I mean, you you are in a market where guys who have done a tenth of what what has Dante Moore done compared to Spencer freaking Sanders? Whew. What has Dante Moore done compared to Spencer Sanders? And that yeah. dude just went and got a bag from Eugene, yeah. and he's going to sit back and wait. Now, I know eligibility, there's there's a difference there. I mean, Dante Moore, young player, has you know years left, but Spencer Sanders could have gotten a bag all over the place, and he chose the one place where he didn't end up playing. That's what's just so bizarre about it, and that very clearly didn't have like an open quarterback spot. They had a conversation where you could say, here's how Spencer Sanders ends up the starting quarterback, but it also involves him beating out multiple other guys to get that job, whereas you're seeing quarterbacks left and right sliding into starting positions where they're guaranteed to start um, and make money and you know get the, the most out of their value and all those things. And he got some money, and that was about it. Like, didn't even finish school. I mean, he's, he's ineligible for the, the bowl game. So you weren't even going to class, as Neil pointed out. You weren't playing. I, I just, I'm sure he's a great guy, and and I, you know, hope he he maximized what he could while he could because there's not like a big bright NFL future out there for him. And I just, I think that's one of the biggest fumbling of the bags. And hopefully, it is a lesson for other players in the future of like, this is grown folk stuff now. Yeah, like this isn't yeah, just there like are consequences. Yeah, there are yeah. actual consequences to you know bluffing. And there are consequences to calling out your head coach. And there are consequences to threatening to leave if you don't get your way. And he, unfortunately, is going to be a case study in exactly all those things that I just mentioned. He made some money, but he also, I think, lost some money. Because had he gone out and played this year and played 12, 13 games and had a really good year and just done some of what he did at Oklahoma State, maybe on a – you know, team that was involved in, in a conference race or something, got an attention, there's a case to be made, especially the way NFL, uh, you know, offenses and, and styles are changing. Is like, you know, maybe guys uh, who weren't going to be the most surefire quarterbacks 10 years ago are now the guys that we're seeing as, like, the dual threat. I mean, he's a dual threat. He's, you know, he, he's not a perfect quarterback by any means, but it seems like the, the league has evolved to where – a lot of these great college players are able to transition over to the NFL a lot better. So who knows what kind of opportunities would have been there had he come off of a great year. And instead, it's just like, what are the NFL teams looking at now? A year where you didn't play, you chased the money, you left your old school where you were the incumbent and basically did it disrespectfully, didn't finish your classwork, so you weren't even eligible for the bowl game. And I, I just Was he the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year one year? Uh, I, well, he said that, and I couldn't recall off the top know, of my he, head. Look, he was the year that Baylor played him. Look, the he was certainly game? in the yeah, yeah. He's in the, the conversation, conversation for if he it. Hadn't won it. I mean, there's yeah. we can Google it okay. and find so out. So he's he's. Gonna, I love watching if, Spencer Sanders. He was a little bit of a, a mad scientist at times. I thought he was fun to watch. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Smokey. I know Wet Blanket and, and others look, are like he's crazy. Okay, I love watching. Him. Okay, so look, if he would make an NFL roster and hang around, he's going to make six figures a year. Right. Right. So even the practice squad, you're going to do pretty well. Now, his best shot, like maybe he does that, but since he didn't play, and then you just heard what Neil said, look, okay, so he's going to probably be in the XFL. So when you talk about costing yourself some money, it's $59,000 a year average. Now, look, for most people, a starting salary out of college at 59000 is a great deal, but when you could have been making $259,000 to do the same exact thing at another place, then then it's bad. Like, and that, So that's what's weird to me because – Auburn, like he, like he could have gone in there, not played in spring, not played the first two weeks of summer camp, and been the starting quarterback at Auburn. Mm -hmm. Like he could have taken as long as he needed. There was no competition. You know, he wasn't, you know, and look, I I kind of feel you hear like the story about Levy and the story about Spencer Sanders. It feels like Lane Kiffin got out of those people what he needed, which was a kick in the ass for Jackson Dart, and then, you know, picking Levy's brain for offensive acumen and then they 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 all move on but with spencer sanders like miami like would have sent uh, tyler van dyke to the portal a, a year early like there have been a lot a lot barry crawford i asked oklahoma state fans if they could respond about spencer sanders was he someone you like was he beloved and barry crawford he was but 
he burned his bridges, and we don't care anymore. Yeah, that's also what he did too. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, you know what? There will come a time where he's like inducted into like the cowboy. You know, like something. There will be an honor for him at some point down the line. Like, and not anytime soon, mind you. But <clears> you know, there he'll probably realize his mistakes and he'll have a come to Jesus and then you know try to patch it up. Right? We see that quite often, and I'm sure that that could be very well in the cards for him down the line. You know in Stillwater at some point, but man, it's going to take some time because he did. He took a flamethrower to that bridge on the way out. He basically forced them into a decision they weren't even having expecting to make of, what do you mean you're talking about leaving? You got a year to come back. We were just in the Big 12 championship game a couple years. Like, I mean, and then you basically, I mean, call call him out and and basically give him, a, you know, an ultimatum of sorts or give me what I want or I'm leaving. And it's like, Mike Gunn, he's like, I'm not... Who the hell are you? He's like, one of the guys that you're not going to do that yeah, to. Yeah, I'll go yeah. get Alan he Bowman and like we'll it. just run a billion times behind Ollie yeah. Gordon. Like I mean, yeah. it's so, so that was just a, a really poor mistake on his part. I think we've 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 all established that, and I don't know what's next for him. But if he had had a big year at Oklahoma State, we'd be talking about where does he line up in the draft, or where does he fit in on the next level, or what's possible for him. And instead, we're talking about a case study in example A of why. You don't do what he did, and and hopefully that that is a learning tool for for future players. We got to come back. Craig's off the radar.